Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. In a recent video, we discussed changes to the track grouping matrix, particularly the ability to edit based on track groups. Today I'll be rebuilding my drum tracking template using some of these new options in the track grouping matrix. Often when I'm recording myself playing drums, it's just me, so I have to have a streamlined and optimized process to be able to do all of this by myself. Those new changes in the track grouping matrix make it much easier for me to edit my drums after the fact. And also, the ability to create track templates in Reaper makes it very easy for me to set up to record at any time. I've already covered creating track templates on the channel in the past, but I thought it would be a good idea to rebuild my drum tracking template with these new features, and also thought it might help some newcomers to Reaper. Let's take a look. I've got a blank project open, and normally when I'm tracking drums, I'll start by right-clicking in the track control panel, go to Insert Track from Template, and choose Mic Drum Tracking. That old tracking template worked fine, but as I said, I'd like to rebuild it with some of these new features. I use 12 different mics when I'm recording my drums, so instead of using this template today, I'd like to start by adding multiple tracks. From that same right-click menu, I'll choose Insert Multiple Tracks, and that gives me the dialog that asks me how many tracks and if I'd like to name them. If I place a name in this dialog, each track will have the same name followed by a number. But in this case, I'd like to name my tracks manually based on what part of the drum kit I'll be miking. So I'll add my 12 tracks, and press OK. I've got a cheat sheet here to remind me which one of my mics is tied to which part of the drum set, so I'll move that over to the side again and we'll get started. I'll go in order of my inputs and we can rearrange the track order later. Placing my tracks in numerical order makes it much easier for me to assign the inputs later on. So for track number one, I'll call that ride. Track number two is hat. Track number three is snare top. Track number four is snare bottom. Track number five is kick. Track number six is tom one. Track number seven is tom two. Track eight is tom three. Track nine will be my first overhead. When I name my overheads, I don't name them overhead left and right. I tend to name them overhead hat and overhead ride. That way if I have a left-handed drummer or if I have tracks that I'm passing to someone else for mixing, they can pan the drums from audience perspective or drummer's perspective, however they feel, without any regards to left or right. So track number nine will be overhead hat, and track number 10 will be overhead ride. I use the same naming convention for my room mics, so track number 11 will be room hat, and track number 12 will be Room Ride. Now that I've got my tracks named, I'll need to route the appropriate input into each track. That can be done a few different ways. I can right-click the Record Arm button on either the Track Control Panel or the Mix Control Panel, go to Record Input. My interface has 16 inputs, and the ride is currently routed to input number 3. So I can choose input number 3, and my ride channel is all set. But there's a much faster way. I'll go to View, and Routing Matrix. The routing matrix gives me an easy way to quickly assign inputs to all of my tracks. I've got my named tracks across the top, and my inputs along the left side. As I mouse over any of these cells, I have colors going vertically and horizontally to help keep my place, and we can see that my ride track is set to receive from input number 3. As I've said earlier, I named my tracks based on the input that they receive from, so I can easily go down diagonally and add my inputs to the desired track. My hat mic will receive from input 4, my snare top mic will receive from input 5, and I can continue going down diagonally to set up all of my inputs for each of my tracks. I'll double check my notepad just to make sure that I've got all of my inputs routed correctly, and that looks fine. So I can close my routing matrix, and proceed with setting up my template. Next, I'd like to group a few items together. For example, my snare top and bottom, I'd like to put those in a folder track. A folder track acts as a bus in Reaper, so by default, anything inside of a folder will send its audio to the parent track. There are a few different ways that you can create folders. I can double click a blank space in my track control panel to add a new track. I'll call this snares. I'll left click and drag to move my snares track up above the snare top and bottom. You may have heard it said before that in Reaper, a track is a track is a track. Any track can be configured to perform just about any function. So there is no dedicated folder track. This track becomes a folder when I take snare top and snare bottom and I can left click and drag them slightly to the right to move them underneath and inside of the snares track. And now the snares track becomes a folder. I have my track control panel set to indent slightly for folder tracks. That can be configured in the theme adjuster by going to options, themes, and theme adjuster color controls. 
I'm currently on the mixer control panel page, so I'll scroll left or right until I can find the track control panel. And there's an option at the upper left to change the folder indent level. I like mine at one quarter, but you can make it whatever you'd like or have no indent at all. For the mix control panel, I prefer to have my folder indent at none because I like to have my track numbers all the way at the bottom. There's no right or wrong for the folder indent, it's just whatever you prefer. So I'll close out of my theme adjuster, and I'd like to make another folder for my toms. I have a faster way that I like to use to create my folder tracks, and it's through a custom action. This action is a script that can be installed using Repack. If you're not familiar with Repack, click the link above to learn more. I'll go to Actions, Show Action List, and search for Create Folder. The script I'll be using is from La Casena, and it's called Create Folder to Contain Selected Tracks. I have this action bound to a key press, Control shift f So I can close my Actions list, select my Tom tracks, and press Control shift f This generates a dialog asking me for the parent name, and I'll call that Toms. And now I have a folder track called Toms that contains my three Tom tracks. I'll do the same for my overheads. And the same for my room mics. Now that I've got my tracks named and mostly set up into folders, I'd like to rearrange this a little bit. I like to have my kick track first, followed by my snares folder, then my toms, my hat and ride mic, then my overheads, and then my rooms. I'd also like to take my hat and ride spot mics as well as the overheads and place them in another folder just for my symbols. I'll take this a step further and take my kick, snares, and toms and place them in another folder for shells. This way I can perform bus processing on the drum shells separate from the cymbals. And one more step, I'll take all of these and place them in a top level folder called drums. You may have noticed that once I place these inside of the drums folder, all of the tracks change color. That's because I've set up automatic coloring through SWS extensions. If you're not familiar with SWS extensions, be sure to click the link above. For a brief overview, I'll click on Extensions, and Auto Color Icon Layout, and my second rule says any track named Drum will take on this greenish color, but I have another rule that's the highest priority in my list. This says that all child tracks will take on the color of the parent. So track number one is called Drums, and since the word Drum appears in the track title, it takes on the green color. And once that happens, all of the child tracks inside of the drum folder will take on the color of the parent as per the rules inside of the auto color extension. We'll close this and move on to panning. You might notice that my pan knobs look a little bit different from the default layout in Reaper. You can right click the pan knob and there are different pan modes that are available. I've chosen stereo pan as the default for my tracks. Check the link above if you'd like to know more about the panning options in Reaper. I like the stereo pan option because it gives me the ability to not only pan my track left and right, but I can also control the stereo width of a stereo track. My individual drum tracks are mono, but my room mic's bus, my overhead's bus, my cymbal's bus, my tom's bus, my shell's bus, and of course my drum's bus will contain the sum of all the tracks fed to it. What I like to use this feature for is I can pan each of my individual drum elements however I would like, but on the top level inside the drums folder, I can reduce the overall stereo width to 90%, for example. That way I can hard pan my guitars left and right and have them on the extreme sides of the stereo field, while my drums can be just a little bit more centered. When I'm mixing, I like to lay out my instruments as if I'm visualizing a band on the stage, and the ability to change the stereo width of a track helps me to better achieve that. I may change this up when I'm in the middle of mixing something, but for my default, I can go ahead and start to pan my toms a bit. I'll pan tom 1 to the left a bit. Tom 2 to the right a bit. My first tom is a rack tom, but toms 2 and 3 are both floor toms. So with tom 2 pan to the right a bit, I'll pan tom 3 to the right a bit more. My ride cymbal sits to my right, so I'll pan that to the right a bit. My hat is to my left, so I'll pan that to the left. My hat side overhead is to the left, so I'll pan that to the left. In this case, I'm panning it completely to the left, and I'll do the same with my ride. If I feel like that's too wide, I can always just move the stereo width knob of the overheads bus. And I'll do the same thing with my room mics. I'll move my room hat side mic to the same side as my hat mic. And I'll do the same with the ride side. And just as with the overheads bus, I can do the same thing with the room mics bus and bring that in a little bit if I feel like it's too wide. 
As I think about this spatially, my overheads are closer together than my room mic, so I do think that I'd like to bring my overhead mics in just a little bit. As I said, this is just in my template, but I can always change this after the fact during a mix. About 80% should be fine. That's close enough. There's a few other things that I like to change in this template based on experience, and that is, I know that I need to invert the phase on my Tom 1, as well as my snare bottom mic. The snare top and snare bottom mic are capturing the same drum from opposite sides, and because of that can cause some phase cancellation. The best way I can think of to explain phase cancellation is if you're able to visualize a waveform, it goes up and down, up and down, based on the sound source. If I have two competing sound sources that have an identical waveform and one is inverted, that will cause phase cancellation. And when phase cancellation occurs, a sound can be described as thin, lacking low end, and if the waveforms of two tracks are completely identical and one is inverted, the sound will be completely nulled. So since the snare top and bottom are miking the same thing from opposite sides, I just know from experience that it's best that I invert my snare bottom to make sure that the two don't cancel each other out. I've also found that when my Tom 1 mic is not inverted, I have a tendency to get a little bit less low end out of my kick drum mic. I'm not an audio scientist and don't claim to fully understand this, I just know based on experience that this is what works for me. I also know that people get tired of hearing this phrase, but at the end of the day, use your ears, try changing the phase on a few tracks and see how it affects your sound. Now that I've got my tracks in the order that I'd like, with the inputs that I'd like, and panned the way I'd like, I need to address a few other issues. If I were to right click the record arm button on my shells track, we'll see that this is set to record on input number one, and I actually don't want any audio recorded on this track, I simply want it to act as a folder or a bus for all of my shell tracks. So in that same right click menu, I'll move up to record, disable, input monitoring only. And that will ensure that this track will not record any audio. Next I'll do the same with my snares bus, with my toms bus, my cymbals bus, my overheads, my room mics, and finally my top level drums folder. Depending on the height of your tracks, you may also notice a button up and to the left of the record arm button. This button will take you straight to the inputs for that track. So this gives us access to some of the same functions that we previously reached by right clicking the record arm button. Now I'd like to set up some grouping. I'll select all of my tracks. Since these are the only tracks in my project, I can press Ctrl A to select all. If you're doing this in the middle of an existing project, you can left click your first track and then hold shift and click the last track to select everything in between. With my track selected, I now need to assign some track grouping parameters. I'll right click one of the tracks, go to track grouping, and track grouping parameters. The default key press for this is shift G. You can rename the track group if you'd like, but be aware that this track group name will not carry over into additional projects. The first parameter that I'd like to choose is record arm lead and record arm follow. I'd like to have this parameter set for all of the tracks in the group, and I'll show you why. We'll close this track grouping dialog, deselect my tracks, and you may notice a red flag around the record arm button for each of these tracks. That flag indicates that this parameter is grouped for all of the tracks with the same colored flag. So I can click the record arm button on any of these tracks, I'll choose the overheads track, and all of my drum tracks have been armed for recording, with the exception of the ones that we chose for input monitoring only. I'll disarm my tracks for now, select all of my tracks again, and go back into the track grouping parameters. The next option I'd like to enable is Media Razor Edit Lead and Media Razor Edit Follow. This ensures that when I get to the editing phase, I don't have to manually select and group any of my media items, but instead, if I make an edit on any one track in this group, the edit will apply to all of them. This is essential in drum editing because I want all parts of the performance to be moved and edited at the same time. I'll do another drum edit in the near future to demonstrate this. Now that I've got that completed, I'll close my track grouping dialog. Finally, with all of my tracks selected, I'll right click all of my tracks in the track control panel, go to save tracks as track template, and this will open the default location for Reaper track templates. You can either give this a new name, in this case I'll be overriding my previous one, and if you had any media items or envelopes on any of the tracks, you could also choose to include those in the template. I just like this as a blank template so I can quickly get back to drumming, so I'll save this. And in my case it tells me that this template already exists and asks if I would like to replace it. I'll click yes, and I'm done. So now if I want to record drums again, 
I'll delete all these tracks, and I can right click my track control panel, go to insert track from template, and choose mic drum tracking, and there's my drum tracks set up just like we wanted. Reaper has lots of options like this built in to help make both your recording and editing process much more efficient. We'll explore a few more of these at a later time. If you like the content you've been seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the buy me a coffee. I haven't had coffee in a few days, I'm trying to quit, but I still appreciate the donation. Or super thanks link below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. Maybe I should change my catchphrase. I like insect macro photography. Maybe I can put a buy me a macro lens link in the description or something. Worth a shot.